Well, let's start with introducing yourself because I know your name, but. All right, well, yes, my name is Nadia Rogova. That's the right spelling of my name, no right pronunciation of my name. I come from Bulgaria, like we already stated, I'm 40 years old. I work from home, have been into the graphic design, uh, let's say, area or sphere for the past 40 years. Okay. Uh, I've, started, I've started in 2017. Um, just by it was it was just kind of a idea that came into my mind suddenly i am very fond of um, technologies i'm a techie person i admire computers and uh, you know softwares and things like that and apart from that i've always had a love for design when i was little i wanted to become a um, fashion designer and i was wow. drawing a lot yes i love drawing so I thought that there would be something, you know, at my age already, I cannot start being now a, an artist or a fashion designer whatsoever. There would be something that maybe I can combine both the things. And uh, this is how the idea of graphic design came. You know, okay. with all the technologies uh, evolving, it's, it's just uh, uh, that's something that came into my mind. I had a full-time job at, the, at that time in a hospitality area, like I was uh, saying beforehand. And I did the course additionally in my spare time. And it was a course of entire year of education in um, graphic course, design. Yeah. Yes. And I went through all the aspects of design as it is, like you would have basics of uh, softwares like Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, uh, then video motion, you know, video right. editing as well, like After Effects. Um, uh, then it was the uh, Premiere Pro is basically based on the Adobe package yeah. mainly. Then uh, have also studied uh, 3D, 3D design. I've worked with 3ds Max and Maya, which Maya was quite challenging. It's not an easy tool to use, even though I'm I'm a gaming person. I love games. And I was looking forward to this course so I can actually learn how to make these animated characters and so on. But uh, with the time, I would say it's it's not my thing. So once the course was over, um, that's it. I decided, you know, to start working towards establishing myself as a graphic designer or at least getting more experience in this. Yeah. And this is how I I still don't like the title graphic designer uh, to call myself it's because too generic, I think it it is firstly generic, but it is something like you would have to deserve with your own skills, yes. and uh, I would rather leave that to the people who work with me or to my clients, you know, to decide whether I'm actually a graphic designer. I just know how to work with softwares, you would say, yes. and. Uh, apart from this, you know, working mainly with Illustrator, I fell in love with Illustrator. That is my uh, <laughs> top most, you know, favorite. Thank tool. you, thank you. That's my yes, top most, I, of I, course. I really love it. Yes, I can. Yeah. I do ninety percent of my work in Illustrator, and the other ten is for Photoshop and the rest of the softwares. I barely even touch, you know, anymore. And apart from this, uh, actually simultaneously with this, I started my own business with t-shirt, custom t-shirt designs, which okay. al allows me to put my own creativity into something, you know, that it's my own product. It's something that yeah. uh, is up to my vision and to the things the way I see it. You know, I don't do it for a client, but I... For yourself. Okay. Yes, for myself, yeah. and obviously expecting someone to like what I do, and so on. So and you do that through print-on-demand sites? I do this, sorry, I couldn't understand. Yeah, print-on-demand sites? Uh, you can say so, but I don't use the sites. I have my own Facebook page, and Facebook is my main channel. Yeah, but so the, it's those t-shirts, or do you have a, um, a print those in your area? Those t-shirts there, you can say on a print-on-demand uh, kind of, yeah. yes. Okay. 
I have all the supplies, the tools and things to uh, create the t-shirt, but I don't do it beforehand, no. Everything is placed on a mock-up and is just exposed as a design, displayed as a design, you know, on the page. And that's it. When the order comes, then I fulfill and so on, which is actually, we can say, cost-effective, you know. Yes. So you do the fulfilling for a small yourself. business. Correct. Yeah. These are my two main um activities or main um working you know occupations that i yeah. use to basically feed myself yes with the time i uh, took myself away from all the other things that i can do because i can do so many things you know with my experience before uh i was thinking maybe i should it's all about earning a of course, and feeding your family and me being a head of a family, it's a little bit of a different story. Um, yeah. So I can do a lot of administrative work and so on. I can do translations because I speak a few languages, like English is my main language, you know, and yes. I can translate easily to and fro Bulgarian, for example, but I also speak French and Russian. So that is a vast, uh, you know, options for me. Uh, but I narrow them down with the with the time because you have to know your niche and you have to know uh, where your focus is. Focus is very important. So there's <laughs> nothing like this, like multitasking. It's all about focusing really with all yes. your senses, all your being in what you want to do. So, yes, that's it. That's what I do right now, you know, daily. Uh, yeah, so, and you're selling through website. your own website or are you using... I still think that I don't need a website. So like I said, I use just the Facebook channel for now. Like, uh, I, and then I, I've got an Instagram account as well on the same t-shirt page. Um, but I don't think it's the strongest uh, channel of everything, you know, for sales. It's more like of showcasing work, let's say. Uh, but Facebook remains my main, you know, activity. For a website, I, I thought a, a couple of times already, I've discussed it also with colleagues and friends, but I don't see a use for it for now, at least. Oh, but that's really nice because a lot of people think if they start out, they need a logo, they need a website, and they need so many things before they can start, but you prove mm. that you don't do need that. Yeah, well, I've created my own logo, of course. I am designer, you know. Yeah, of course, designer, of course. So I've created of, my, my course, logo. But you, don't, you don't need a website to be able <clears throat> to start. So you Correct, actually yes. have only a Facebook page. And that's yes. also for graphic design or only for your T-shirts? For graphic design, obviously, I've used some of the professional channels. Like I have a portfolio in Behance, which is yes. one of the biggest platforms. I have a profile in Dribbble as well, but Dribbble is not of my preference. I prefer to put my work in uh, Behance. Mm -hmm. And just recently, I actually launched uh, my own page in uh, Facebook also for my graphic design so that I can kind of uh, divide things because I used to post everything in uh, one page, like my graphic design services and my t-shirts uh, they were in one page but i think this doesn't work that well and uh, yes. it's again it's again about the focus you know it's uh, just diluting the focus of what you actually do so i've divided them and uh, that's another that's audience it. you talk to yeah correct to different yes. audiences, so it's better to <laughs> split them up yeah i agree yeah you may think that uh, with uh, hitting one you know audience maybe you can get them into uh, being interested in the other activities that you do but it, it doesn't really work like this no. so yes i've separated them and again i don't have a specific website for my no. uh, graphic design i just use the gen general portfolio sites because they are beautiful you meet your colleagues you have all your community there you know so if you need to have uh, like a critic on your work there is the place and yeah. having a web having a website separately you know for your graphic uh, design services doesn't make you any more professional than you are you no. know for example it's just showcasing your work in another way and i've seen uh, some of my colleagues with uh, you know with the same title graphic designer with uh, i'm sorry to say with really awful websites so it doesn't make them a good favor i you think know, it so. does more harm than it does good 
correct, yes. I think you can yes. better uh, focus on one or two things like Facebook and Behance and do that correctly than have a hideous website that gives you... Correct. Um, yeah, I think that's better. But it's good to hear because a lot of people think they need all those things to be professional. And that's not true anymore, especially in this time not. Correct. It's kind of imposed as an opinion to the society, you know, that this is the channeling way to do things. Uh, I tend to disagree on that. Yeah. Although there is one thing that could be, a, you know, a minus, and that is it's very easy sometimes to get locked out from your Facebook profile. There are many issues. There are hacking issues as well. And yeah. God forbid, you know, I hope it doesn't happen and so on. And when your information gets breached there and your channels get shut down, this is the only minus that you carry because if you do not have an other platform where you actually showcase your work or your yeah, items you know to sell, then it's gone, correct. But and, if you uh, have so a website, you can have the same problem. If you have your website get hacked, yeah. they can delete it as well. So correct, maybe yes. the risk is a little bit higher on platforms than your website, but the risk is still there yeah. with your website. It's true. But do you use a mailing list? I don't. You no. don't. So that's one mm -hmm. of the things I started using uh, recently to um, um, have that to don't have that problem because if you have a mailing list, you own your own uh, uh, audience, and on the platform you mm -hmm. never own them. If it's gone, it's gone. You can't reach them. True. So that's one yeah. of the reasons that I started working with a mailing list. So maybe a nice tip for you. Yeah, it is definitely. <laughs> well, I I have uh, for what is worth, I have the emails to all my uh, clients for design, you know, and yes, with them, with uh, some of them, obviously, we still keep in touch, even. Uh, but uh, no, I do not have a mailing list, yeah. and yeah, yeah, I should look into it. Yes. <laughs> well, you never shoot yeah. anything, but maybe it's an idea to. No, no, yeah. I. I I've heard it before, yes, as a good practice. So yeah. I've, I've, I've known it for yeah. years and started only recently. So I know the feeling. <laughs> yeah, should be. You should try to see that. So what was the hardest thing for you when you started out? Because you said something like four years ago, you started with that education. And what More was... More or less, yes, four years. Yeah, yeah. 2017, so what was the hardest yes, thing? Four years. Hardest thing for us, like for anyone else who is starting something on their own, it is obviously firstly to gain exposure. When it comes to graphic design, this is very important that your name is out there in the crowd and people would get to recognize you or people would trust you to do work for them. So uh, in that order, you know, I, I'm not one of these people who would start straight away out of you know, completing the course and starting to state, okay, I can do this or I can do that. I always measure my skills and it's where I decide, you know, where to bid for a project or, uh, you know, to put myself as uh, a person who can actually complete it because that's very important for me that the quality of work, even if it's the smallest thing, you know, the quality of work is very important that you give away. Yeah. So the hardest thing was this, you know, to, to gain the exposure, to get the, gain the experience, which is a way, you know, it's apart from the learning process, which is a totally different thing, you know, working with clients, as you know, is completely different area. Yeah. And uh, what I've done for this is one more minus is that my area of my circle of friends is not so fast, like we spoke. So and even the friends that I have around me, they don't need really my services, nor can be my critics because they barely understand what is happening. Uh, so um, what I did actually to, you know, to get accustomed to using the softwares and to get to know more people is I approached a group of uh, startup business in Facebook still, you know, that's why it's my main channel because everything is there and everyone is there. Uh, so I approached this group is uh, of people who have their own businesses or who are just starting or they are very small, like still in that business niche. And I just offered my services for free. That's That was the first thing to do. I stated that I've just completed courses and in order to gain some experience, 
I'll be gladly, you know, doing any collaterals or whatsoever, you know, work uh, they might need for their businesses, for their sites, with the condition that I actually help a person who is a small startup or who is a small business. Because yeah. larger companies, they have their own organizations, they, they have the resources correct and yeah. they probably have everything already made. And for them, it's uh, also important, you know, to have the brand gu guidelines and so on, everything, you know, to be much more on a precise level. So that was my condition, you know, that you're someone small like me, for example, just uh, starting and trying to get uh, through that, uh, you know, world of business and <laughs> to accomplish something for yourself. And this is how I started. And this is how I actually uh, developed very useful connections. I've met with other people. And this is, again, coming out of your show and uh, you know, just challenging whatever is uh, your weakness, you know, to turn it into something that would work for you. And uh, slowly and steadily, this is how I, you know, got to know people and got to, uh, got to be recognized as a person who is actually in the design field. I okay. cannot say that my name is like something, you know, that big, oh, now you, everyone knows it. no. But uh, it's uh, still, you know, this is the way that I overcame the, the initial challenges of how to get that confidence in my skills that I've been yes. learning for so long. And at the same time is uh, exactly uh, getting myself there in the market and actually trying to monetize what I've learned. And yes. And uh, the it. clients that were paying, they came from that uh, group of people you got to know in those groups? In the beginning, yes, I got a few from there. Then I've joined a couple of uh, so-called freelancing groups we have here in Bulgaria. They are worldwide, but I would say that international ones are full with spammers, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, yeah, here in Bulgaria, there are a couple of these groups that are kind of useful, actually, you would say, you know, for people like me. Uh, because there are users from all over, you know, the country that would require something to be done for them. And then you obviously bid, you bid for uh, this project. And ideally, if you get selected, you know, you do the work and it's a kind of like this. It's a kind of a gambling game every time. But yeah. this is what I, what, I did, what I did afterwards, you know, joining these groups and basically gaining the courage to put myself uh, to request you know to do this or that project and this is this is how it worked and then it works through ideally with recommendations you know with happy yeah. customers and so on that was my next and question that recommendations needs to get yes. seen by others well recommendation is uh, the best advertisement that you can have yeah. is this uh, is same goes though for the critics so if you have done wrong once then, uh, you know, your bad reputation can very easily spread around. And and your... Easier than your good reputation. Correct, that yes. That is always and... easier to spread. <laughs> Correct. And yes. the good reputation goes very, very slow. It's, it's still a building process, I would say, after even so many years. It's still a building process, you know, because firstly, yes. the competition is very high. Yes. Like the course that I have done, there are thousands of other people who have done it as well. And still and, do it. <laughs> uh, correct, and they are still do, doing it. So it's like a kind of a manufacturing pro production that every every year or every month or so, there is a new designer, you know, so-called designer coming on the scene and so on. Yes. So, yeah. Where did you get the recommendations? So I did, yes. Where? I where did people put those recommendations for you? It is it is the same way uh, again through these uh, groups, freelancing groups. A happy customer, a customer that I've uh, is uh, happy with my services would say, "I recommend you the services of uh, Nadia Rogova because I worked with her and she is good. I like the way she's done it, and so on." It's a word of mouth, basically. If we were yeah. outside. So Talking is the same thing, you know, that yeah, but that's say, the oh, best way. Know. 
Yes, correct. And yes. what you see in groups that uh, if somebody asks something, they put your name. Oh, you should have Nadia because she can do that for you. Just, correct. So that kind of recommendation uh, worked for you very yeah. well. Yes, very well. I would say I'm not that I'm not in that stage yet, but it works well. Well now. enough. I mean. Yes, well enough for now. <laughs> yeah. Yes, and uh, with my t-shirt, uh, you know, business is something different. There I encourage people just to leave their recommendations, or not their recommendations, but their feedback on my page directly. I get the feedback obviously um, already in a private message and so on because I keep close to my customers. You know, it's not like just... Uh, uh, okay, there you are, your t-shirt, and this is done, you know, I, I seek for the feedback, and that is very important yes. as well, that people should look for a feedback for what they are doing, and should not be afraid if that feedback is, uh, you know, negative, because through the negative feedbacks, you can, you can learn, learn how to get better, yes, yes. and uh, I don't manipulate these things, I leave it to the people to express themselves the way that they see it, you know, and that is the most important thing. Yeah, I think if because everybody this, this has, is how if people have success, you won't learn anything, you won't get any better. So you need that negative feedback correct, to get better yes. and to learn. Yeah. But and I, I am surrounded scary. It is scary, and you know why? Because the ego is uh, very, uh, you know, it's uh, stronger than anything else in a yes. person, and that ego gets hurt. Not everyone can take it, you know, lightly, but to me. Um, I've surrounded myself with people that are free to criticize me the way they want. I have a person that criticized me uh, without even thinking what he says. Be and I value this the most because I don't want anyone to sugarcoat me. I want someone to tell me it's honest. Uh, exactly, yes, what uh, he or she thinks so that I know that what I'm seeing with my eyes looks the same in people's eyes. The way you say that you don't know uh, whether what you see in Illustrator as a, for example, as a difficulty would be the same for the others. That is the way to learn through an honest communication. And yes, that is one very valuable thing that I keep. You know, yeah. I need the critics. When it's a healthy critic though, because sometimes it's just an honest hate, you know, people tend to do that as well, you know. Yeah. Luckily, not luckily not to me. It hasn't happened. No, I, I haven't had that either because a lot of people are afraid yeah. for bad negative uh, reactions, but I think it's so little you get really bad reactions, but we're so afraid of it that we don't do anything afraid of it is being correct. hurt. Yeah, it's the same thing I told you is the ego that gets scared and keeps all the rationality away and uh, yeah. people in general are um, human beings are narcissistic uh, natures. They have an, an artistic nature. So in some, you can basically swallow that nature or keep it somewhere down, you know, so, yes. <laughs> so, but uh, in some people, it's not so easy. So there is, there is a thing that's, that's the difference in accepting critics or so on. Yeah, but I think it's an important part that you need to do go out there and learn from those critics. That will be the way Correct. to go higher and get your skills to a level you never thought you could maybe. Correct. Definitely, yeah. it's like this. So yeah. I think I know the answer already, but you are doing everything by yourself or do you have any help? I'm a one-man show, yes. Yeah, yeah, we do, <laughs> but just for the record, just to be sure. So and if you start over, would you do it all again by yourself or would you get some help? No, I would do it by myself because it's my baby. It's what I desire to do. So uh, obviously help is always appreciated, but when it comes to the idea and to... Um, structuring the things that you want to do and the way you want to do them that is you it is yes. um, it is your idea it is your vision it is your dream sometimes you know it could be yeah. someone's dream, I'm a big how, fan of a dream. How, <laughs> exactly how could you let someone else to direct your dream it is no. your dream you might look for guidance from people to know the exact way of doing it. I did this. I did my research before starting anything. You know, I did uh, specifically for, let's say, for the t-shirts. I was looking uh, a lot for uh, the 
technologies, how the things are done, you know, where do I get my supplies from? And, you know, that is, it's, it's like a research process, but at the yes. end of the day, it's if you baby. want to do it, exactly, it is your baby and you have yeah. to do it. But things like your administration, your bookkeeping, you wouldn't mind to get that? I wouldn't, I wouldn't yeah, I wouldn't mind that someone doing <laughs> this because I still it's keep, not a baby. you know i should yeah i should keep uh, you know an excel sheet at least with my expenses and with my incomes but it's it's only staying in my brain because you know what it's not my priority <laughs> <at the moment. laughs> i can imagine <laughs> so there would be a little part of the work you could uh, give to somebody else but yeah, i agree yeah, with you yes yeah when it's going to designing or to your vision, you can't give that to anybody else. But all those yeah. things around, maybe posting some social media posts, that could be given to somebody else. But you yes. but you do it yourself, like me. Unless, you know, the idea came out mutually with your friend, for example, or whoever, someone close to you, then obviously it is vital that both of you or the three of yeah. you or four of you, doesn't matter, you know, participate in the process. Depends how the entire idea came through. Yeah, My I idea was like this. I wanted to come out from uh, the area that I was working before because yeah. it was really heavy for me. And I wanted to back up a little bit. And like I said, I'm not exactly the people type and working with so many people, it has been okay, but it's not been my thing, you know, to do. And I wanted to do something for myself that would actually give me uh, a satisfaction, a kind of a pleasure, you know, of doing this because life is short. And, and that's why it's your dream. Correct. It's not exactly my dream, you would say as such, but it's a way to formulate a part of my dream, you know, to come true. A dream because can have dream, a lot of ways, a lot of parts. Exactly, yes. Yeah. Because my dream was to be a fashion designer. I even said it to my teacher yeah. at school, yeah. And, yeah, the drawing teacher. I'm going to be a fashion designer, you would see. There's something <laughs> like that. <laughs> you can design dresses in Illustrator. <laughs> I'm close to it in some yeah, way. So oh, there you are. Sometimes yeah. you have to get close to your dream. <laughs> Yeah. Well, with the, with the time, with the age, and with the life circumstances, dreams can readjust. Yes, and change so, over time, of course. And change, obviously, yes. Yes. Dream is a dream, yes. Do you get discouraged sometimes? Do I get what? Discouraged? discouraged. No. Not at no. all, never. No. I See, think that a is a very strong woman. That is one thing that uh, I set in my mind. And the, I should start from, you know, from afar. I believe strongly in the, um, in the strength of, uh, of the brain, in the strength of thinking of mentality, you know, and in the force of channeling your energy in the di right direction. So when it comes to my business and to the things that I wanted to do, even though it's so hard, you know, it's not like all flowers and uh, you know, butterflies <laughs> around. <In cloud. laughs> the opposite. Uh, like uh, when we when we were chatting, I told you that I don't even have days off. I work when I get work, and I take rest when I don't have anything to do. For example, yeah. you know. Uh, so in that aspect, I do not allow myself to think negatively because negative thinking brings negative energy, negative energy brings negative circumstances of the results. business and more of, yes, moreover, you know, what you think you become is my favorite Buddha quote and it is very, you know, it's very vital. So that's why I don't get discouraged. Yes, sometimes like I get, for example, you would say upset, that is normal. You know, when things are a little bit rough, but discouraged, no. I oh, think when only... When you get upset, what do you do then? I just distract myself. I just leave everything aside and I do something that feeds my soul, like I say, you know. It makes I you listen. positive and happy. And then exactly. you get back to it. I, correct. I listen to music or I play games, you know, I love playing games. And that's it. On the next day, I'm the same person that, you know, is just pushing forward and, and nothing has happened. But that's you know? a good lesson because I think a lot of people get discouraged sometimes or get upset about things and then they fall into a hole where they can't get yeah. out. So I think you need to find a way how you get out of the hole when you, when you get in it. Correct. And if you know what makes you happy and makes you 
positive, then just leave what is upsetting you aside. Go do something that makes you happy and then go back yes. to it with new energy. I you think that's the stress. lesson. When, Correct, yes. Yeah. So that's why I wanted yes. to say that again <laughs> and that you agree <laughs> with that. So I think a lot of people that get discouraged are um, then giving up because they don't know how to get out of that hole. I think that's it is very a big easy lesson. to give up, yes. Yeah. And I think when they know how to channel that bad energy, it's easier to get past that rough spot. See, there are many reasons why people would give up and that would be financially or mentally. They are not, uh, they are not able to handle the pressure or whatsoever. Sorry. Um, and uh, going into negativity, negativity and uh, you know, falling apart, it's very easy. It's really easy. Like you don't really need much to be sad and to be depressed. That is a very big and, you know, a tricky hole that you can uh, fall into very easily. But the hardest part is to keep that positive, you know, mind. And it's very, very, very important, you know, when you are doing something for yourself. If it was a job that you didn't really like and you were doing it for someone else, leave it. You know, yeah. I wouldn't, I, I would not really waste my life and in energy. something that doesn't make me happy. Yes, yeah. energy, I, I, energy, I always waste. Like uh, whatever I've worked so far, I've always done it on a hundred plus percent. You know, I'm not a person who does it on a half, halfway. But if it doesn't satisfy you, if it doesn't make you happy, then why you do it? You know, find a way to do it differently. And when these things happen and you decide, for example, to take a, um, chance in your own uh, you know business or, or in your own endeavors or you know to chase your dream and whatever when it is very hard and you think that it's really like you cannot go on anymore and you are ready to give up you should remind yourself why did you start at first place like yeah you have what to think made, of that dream dream really clearly exactly what made you do it and when you see that you know you would recognize you would remember the spark that you had you know spark in your eyes like thinking about it visualizing and so on and there you are that's the key and you yeah. just keep pushing forward that's it you just have to think is what i do you know you have to think how to move forward what what's next what more to do how to expand and all of these things, you know, rather than just thinking, oh, it's not going well. Oh, what am I supposed to do now? No, no, I'm not that type oh. of person. Right? I'm, I'm, a, um, yeah. um, uh, I'm very fond of buddies, that you have at least one person that you can talk to that when you are down, that they uh, push you up. I'm having a, That a, also oh, helps, yes. Yeah, yeah, because it's sometimes really hard to do it on your own. Not everybody. Uh, I have done it, um, I think, more than almost 15 years alone. And now I have a buddy and it's so much of a difference that if you have somebody to talk to, if you're down and they, pep, they talk you up like, you can do this. And then you're right. I can do this. Yeah, That's really someone important. Who, someone who believes in you, yes. you know, with all its sense and being. Yeah, it's very important. True. Yeah. Just Same not, yeah people so, like that are lucky like you are lucky for me is it's just me <laughs> <laughs> so what's your dream kind for the future dreams i don't really have that dream word okay what's your goal uh, for the future <laughs> in my yes in my vocabulary I'd like to expand, obviously. I have many things that I have in my mind that I would love to do different than what I already do. Obviously, when it comes to graphic design is nothing more than still mastering more and more my skills. I no, I never stop learning. No, I, don't I think, learn every day. I, yeah, I don't think that I know in and out of design and so on. I've seen fabulous work from colleagues that I've done and it's things that for example I still cannot do or uh, it's in a totally different area let's say uh, Photoshop is not my best friend and there are things that I can do uh, but <laughs> not in that level uh, so my goals are this when it comes to graphic design you know to still expand my knowledge and my skills when it comes to my t-shirt designs is 
I have the idea of starting something different than what I do right now. It's a kind of a combining few techniques when it comes to uh, making t-shirts and obviously, uh, let's say making my my brand more recognizable and uh, you know gaining more clients and so on that's it so that's expanding all. is uh, one of your um, correct. goals <laughs> correct yes and i think that's expanding. a good one you don't do this to just be mediocre you want to be better and better and i think you're a little correct. bit like me we always can learn more if we had an eight oh, today yes. the eight and a half is be there tomorrow and the nine can be there the yes. day after tomorrow exactly so it's always good to be um, uh, want to be better and to keep. Learning. I don't think that I know everything. It's very wrong no. to think that you know everything because nobody knows everything. So. I teach Illustrator, and I know I don't know everything. I know even there is a special part of Illustrator that I don't very little about because I'm not in the print industry. So when it comes yeah. to printing, I've done some work in that area, so I know a, a little bit, but that's not my expertise. Correct. But yes. if it comes to the so tools, something. I think I know all of them, but not all of them in detail. Because Correct. I don't use them daily. The ones I use daily, I know them in and out. But the ones I don't use daily, they're not my thing that I know by head. I have to look it up sometimes. And that's okay. Mm. That's okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's perfectly fine, obviously. And you just find new ways, you know, to, to do things and to learn new stuff. That's yeah. what I do. So what advice would you give to women that are just starting out? What advice would I give to them? Mm. Yeah, firstly that's a good be, one. <laughs> firstly, to be very strong mentally, mainly, because it's a, it's, a, it's a tough area to start something on your own, especially if, let's say, you have limited funds for this, because everyone can do things with a lot of uh, money, but yeah. when it start, when you start small and uh, you actually need to struggle for everything, you have to be mentally strong and prepared for the bad times because things like that would happen. Yeah. Um, one business doesn't grow for a day. It takes a lot, a lot of time and efforts. So that's one of the things that they should have that a long breath. stability, <laughs> long breath. Yes. The other thing is to set a clear idea. It's very important also to have a very clear idea of what they want to do and to channel all their energy there. Yeah, so focus. We talked about it earlier. Focus Correct. is so yes. important. Focus is very important, yeah. yes. Better to one thing doing know. right than 10 things a little bit. Correct, yes. So that is what I would advise and not to be afraid is the other thing and not to shy away there's nothing to be afraid of there's nothing to be uh, scared of if it doesn't work it doesn't work if someone doesn't like you they don't like you there are 10 others who would like you and so people are really positive go. i noticed that <laughs> really, people are really positive and they're like oh beautiful oh excellent so i think you get 10 excellence for the one that says hmm, i don't like it very much See, in Bulgaria, there is a tendency that people are a little bit mean, not even a little bit, but quite mean. So okay. people can get easily discouraged, you know, from uh, just mindless comments that uh, others would do. You don't have to bother about what people would say to you, you know, in that mean ma manner. All you need to worry about is basically mastering what you are doing and focusing on this. Whether and it's I your always skills, say those people whether it's your products, yeah, it's this. And I think that the people that are mean are not your ideal clients. That are not exactly. the people you want to work with. You want to work with those people who love your work. So you focus Correct. on the positive people that are make you feeling happy and make you, yeah, feeling yes. good about and your work. So one more thing that comes in mind is to basically. Um, spend your energy in what is important yes. things which are not of vital importance for you uh, or this is like a side nose that you can hear from here and there it's not your thing it doesn't matter for you it's not important for your life it's not important for what you do so then don't spend your energy on this and I focus agree. it where it has to go yeah that's what i can and i know that them. is hard but i totally agree that Focus on the positive, yes. 
Well, the last thing I want to ask you, where can people find you, your work, your products? <laughs> Well, I'm going to send you a, a list of the links of where I can be found. But like I said, uh, when it comes to graphic design, I can be found in Behance. It's Nadia Rogova. It's still the same. I'll write it down. I will put um, the links in the description so people can link yes. and find you there. Yeah. Uh, when it comes to the t-shirts, yes, Facebook. Uh, my page uh, carries the funny name Shishko Creations. I think Which the link would, would be a better idea. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Shishku, Shishku does not have um, a translation in uh, English. It's actually not an English word. It's Bulgarian word spelled in Latin letters. And it means a chubby person. Okay. Uh, maybe you would know <laughs> for obvious reasons. I just wanted to pick something memorable and funny. Actually, I think it is. That, and and yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> that would serve my, you know, purposes. And uh, yes, I'll give a link to my Facebook uh, page for design as well, which is NR um, Design and Creative, which comes from my initials of my name, Nadia okay. Rogovel. But uh, to summarize it, you can find me either on Facebook or on Behance. Yeah, These so I'll put the links below so people can find you and uh, hope Correct. that they like your page. Well, only if they feel like something that I offer to them identifies with their life. Yes. It's not, it's not, you not know, for everybody. A story for everyone. Yes. It's, I try to communicate to my audience in a sense like, uh, I don't just uh, intend to get people into my page or to uh, um, collect likes because of the sake of the number, but mm -hmm. it is uh, what I aim to do. And you can say that's one of my targets actually for the future is to have people actually engage with the content that I have. Yeah, not a like page. just for the like. Correct. People yes. who really like your work. Yes, just want to have an actual interaction with what I do so that I know on what path I am. Is it fine? Is it not? What you like? What you would prefer to see? And so on. That is that is the main thing. And I think with social media, that is one big minus because it's missing, really. Yeah, I think like it's hard. Yeah. And you, I think I also connect with the people that are connecting to me back. I like that more oh, than oh. just uh, liking somebody. I like to connect and talk to them. Yeah, so I agree. Mm -hmm. So if people mm -hmm. liked what we have talked about and liked your story, then uh, look for Nadia online. <laughs> well, yes, we'll be Thank happy you to. very much for this nice interview. Thanks to you too. Thanks for hosting. Very nice uh, seeing you, meeting you, speaking to you. It was yes. very pleasurable time for me as well. Okay. And we, and we keep in touch for the future as well. We will, of course. So thank you for watching. <laughs>